Hello and welcome back to my channel and another video in my forensic series where I talk about crime scene processes and forensic science. In this video I am going to be talking about the types and groups of forensic evidence that can be found and collected within a crime scene. This will be a sort of bulk list of each of the different groups and types but it is in no way definitive because Anything could be evidence if you try hard enough, dependent on the crime. Also, I'm going to briefly go over each type of evidence, but I'm also going to make in-depth videos on each individual type of evidence, so look out for those on my channel in the future. Forensic evidence can be separated into two different groups. So the first group we have is the physical evidence. As the name suggests, this is any evidence that can be physically recovered. So think things that you can go into a room, pick them up and put them into an evidence bag. The second group of evidence types is trace evidence. Trace evidence is things like marks and prints, things that need to be developed further in order to be recovered. They can't just be picked up and put into a bag. So if we find anything that can be put into the first group, physical evidence, it usually indicates that there has been a transfer of evidence by contact. And we refer to this as Lockhart's exchange principle. Lockhart's exchange principle simply means that with every contact that there is a transfer of evidence will occur. Physical evidence is also suitable for matching pieces of evidence to control samples. So a good example of this is say you have found a shard of glass in a suspect's jacket pocket for example. This is your singular piece of evidence and your control sample could be a smashed window of a car. So the piece of evidence, the shard of glass from the jacket, can be matched to the control sample. The difference between the two is simply that you know that the glass that is found in the window is from the window, that's why it's the control sample, whereas the evidence found in the jacket pocket, we don't know where it's come from, that's where the matching process comes in. The second group of evidence, trace evidence, simply indicates that there has been a contact made. So a good example of this is when you pick up a glass and you leave your fingerprints on it, that is what we call trace evidence because you've made contact with that glass. So now when you put the glass back down on the desk in your bedroom for example, it places you in that room because of the presence of the trace evidence. So. As I mentioned before, the first group, the physical evidence, is any evidence you could pick up and put into an evidence bag. I'm going to go through some more specific examples of types of evidence that we would place in this category. Fibre evidence. So fibres are transferred between things. So when we talk about fibres, we're referring to things like the loose thread from a jumper or a piece of fluff from a blanket, for example. Similar to the glass example, if a fibre is found on a piece of clothing that doesn't match the clothing it Itself, we would be looking for a control sample at a crime scene. For example, if you are wearing a denim jacket and you find a red fibre on it, you could match that fibre to the carpet of a particular room in your house. The carpet itself would be the control sample because we know that the fibres in that are red and they are made of the same stuff and the evidence is the fibre found on your jacket as it obviously doesn't match what you're wearing. Hair evidence. Hair evidence is similar to fibre evidence in the way it is collected and packaged but the identification of an individual, so who the hair belongs to, can be found using DNA evidence from the root of a hair. Glass evidence. So with glass evidence, it's similar to fibre evidence, again, because you are examining that singular piece of glass to see if it matches a particular source. Same as the example I gave earlier in the video, where you have found a shard of glass in a burglar's jacket, for example, and you were trying to match it to a broken car window. Soil and plant matter. So soil evidence or plant matter evidence, so the things like dirt on the bottom of your shoe or the leaves in a footwell of a car are transferable evidence. So say you've had a walk through a forest and then you've got back into your car, you've transferred that plant matter from the ground of the forest into the footwell of your car. This sort of evidence can be used to create a profile. So the types of soil and the types of plant matter can be matched to particular places that you've taken on your walk. So it can place you in a particular place dependent on the profile of the soil and plant matter. Paint evidence. When we talk about paint evidence we're talking about little dislodged dry flakes of paint, the sort of thing that would come off a door or a car. These paint flakes can be matched in the same way as fibres and glass are to a control sample but they can also create investigative leads. Investigative? Investigative. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> 
<laughs> Lastly, we have other things. This can refer to literally anything that can be packaged, anything found in a crime scene that could be deemed evidence. Here we are also talking about anything that can be swabbed, because swabs are physical. We are referring to blood, bodily fluids, petrol, drink, anything. CSIs also love glitter. Glitter is an excellent piece of forensic physical evidence because it gets everywhere. <laughs> On to the second group, trace evidence. As I mentioned, this is anything that has to be developed in some way in order to be recovered and packaged. The first example is fingerprint evidence. As humans, every single person has completely different fingerprints on all five fingers, four fingers and a thumb if you're really that pedantic about it. The most universally known way of developing these fingerprints so that they can be seen and taped and packaged is using powder. So when you see somebody powdering a fingerprint. They're basically turning it from a latent invisible fingerprint to something that you can see on a window pane for example. You can then tape it and package it. I'm going to be doing a more in-depth video on fingerprints as I have found a way that you can powder your own fingerprints at home using talcum powder and a makeup brush but I didn't tell you that. <laughs> the second example of trace evidence are footwear marks. So footwear marks or footprints are similar to fingerprints because they can be quite difficult to detect if you can't see them. However, if you have a three-dimensional print such as you're walking along the beach and you leave a footprint in the sand, these sort of three-dimensional footwear marks can actually be cast using plaster. Odont od odontolo on odontologist? Oh, I can never remember how to say that. Tell me how to say it, because I can never remember. Odontologist. Odontologist, I was right. The third example of trace evidence are bite marks. So a forensic odontologist, very clever people, can actually match bite marks found on a person's skin to somebody's teeth. The last example of trace evidence I'm going to give you are tire marks. Tire marks are similar to footwear marks in the fact that if they're three dimensional, they can be cast, but also when they're photographed and there are specific markings, these specifics can be matched to different products rude. If there is specific elements or wear on a particular tire mark, they can actually be matched to different products and brands found on databases. So those are some examples of the two groups of evidence, physical and trace evidence. Bodily fluids can also be used as forensic evidence, but I'm going to do a more in-depth video about bodily fluids themselves, just as they are fascinating, but also a little more complicated than just the physical and trace evidence. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the comments, let me know which evidence type you were the most interested in because if there's a particular one that people are fascinated by I can cover it first. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.